thank you to Brian for your support on Patreon. Day 17, Wednesday. So bored. I have nothing to do until practice. My tree looks nice, and Dozer told me not to really touch it without him being around. The seeds I planted haven't sprouted yet, and there's nothing I can really do to help him help them right now. No more for tomorrow is done. <sighs> We're just lying on your bed, staring up at the ceiling while trying to decide on something to do until practice. Maybe I should see if one of the guys is free. Someone is bound to be, right? Or someone can text me. Maybe it's Dozer. Oh, it's Harvey. Hey, have you talked to Dozer? I didn't hear from him yesterday. I haven't talked to him today, but I did talk to him last night before going to sleep. He's had a pretty full... He had a pretty full day yesterday. Oh, okay, maybe that's why. I was a little worried about him. He's fine, so nothing to worry about. Did you try calling him or anything? He's normally the one that does that. <sighs> Conversation is a two-way street. Like I said, he was pretty busy, so it might have slipped his mind is all. Were you with him? For a bit, yeah. I applied to volunteer with him at the clinic, then we hung out afterwards. Okay, sorry to bother you. I'll talk to you later. No bother at all. T2YL. I can't help but feel he's being... He's a little jealous about that, but it's unavoidable, I guess. But it's unavoidable, I guess. I really do think it's weird that Dozer didn't talk to him, though. And look at that. Hey, Dozer, what's up? Hey, dude, I'm not bothering you, am I? No, I was just talking about you, though. I'd ask if your ears were burning, but, you know. <laughs> that phrase never worked on me for obvious reasons. I hope whatever conversation was brought up, I was brought up, uh, brought up in was a positive one, though. Uh, well, it was just with Harvey. Oh, what was it about? Was it bad? No, he was just worried about you, is all. Worried about me? Why? So it was because you didn't hear from you yesterday. Oh, huh. Now that I think about it, I didn't talk to him at all yesterday. You didn't see any missed calls or texts from him, so I guess I really didn't think about it. I'll shoot him a text or something later. I was actually just calling to see if you wanted to grab some lunch with me. I just finished my classes for the day and I was gonna swing by the cafeteria. You know you'll have to wait about 20 more minutes for me to get there though, right? Yeah, I know. I don't mind waiting for you though, if you want to join me. I mean, you don't have to join me if you don't want to. Of course I'd like to join you. I'll grab my things for practice and I'll head out towards the school right now. No sense in going there, coming back, and then going back out there again. True. I'll meet you in the cafeteria then. I need to check on something at the supply store so I can waste a little bit of time there. Alright, I'll see you there soon. See ya. Time to gather my things and get going. I don't want to keep him waiting for long. Hey, glad you're here now. Ready to eat? Yeah, sorry to keep you waiting. Don't worry about it. I haven't been here long either. Let's get some food. You and Dozer brought your food and grabbed a table to talk while you ate. You wanna know something ironic? What's that? The weather outside looked like it might be a little stormy later. How is that ironic? Well, considering what you did at the park with me yesterday, all, all because I said I would, you couldn't drag me out into the rain, I thought it was. Oh, huh. I see. Well, if it rains, I suppose that would be a little ironic, huh? Mm-hmm. Hopefully it doesn't rain, though. Our match is Friday, and we could use a little more practice together. Yeah, let's hope it holds off. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about something. It's one reason why I wanted to have lunch with you. Oh, what do you want to talk about? Since we have our next weekend free of any matches, I was wondering if you wanted to go up to Brindle, up to the Brindle Mountains with me. It's still snowy up there. We can rent a room in a hotel, and like it's a log cabin. Like that, like that's like a log cabin. Does that sound like something you'd enjoy? Oh, that sounds like it'd be a lot of fun, but I can't afford anything like that, Dozer. I know, but you don't have to worry about any of that. It sounds like it would be a lot of money, though. I couldn't ask you to pay for everything. What if I told you I wasn't paying for the room? Go on. So, I've been a volunteer at the clinic for a while, and to show their appreciation, I got some really sweet vouchers. I haven't had a reason to use any lately, but now it looks like I have the perfect reason. I have a voucher for three free nights at the Brindle High Mountain Resort, and it includes a free ski rental for one day. Whoa, that's a pretty awesome voucher! Yeah, and on top of that, they have a free continental breakfast and dinner, and we just have to deal with lunch. I won't have a problem with that. 
And you want me to go with you? Of course, there's nobody else I'd rather go. How about it? Sound like fun to you? Yeah, that sounds like a great time. It'll be a mini vacation, and I haven't spent the night in, out of town in ages. Awesome! There's so much we can do there! We can go back, back next Thursday, stay the night, Friday and Saturday, and head back sometime Sunday. We can ski, maybe rent snowboards one day, and even enjoy the hot springs. It'll be a great time. Sounds like it. Are you gonna be okay with all the cold? I love the cold and snow, so I'll be okay. I'll send you a text later with a place in it so you can look it up and see if there might be anything you want to do, that I'll do while we're there. Cool, I'll be sure to check it out. If you see anything that interests you at all, just let me know and I'll see what I can do about it, okay? I'll see if Maria has any work I can do too, so maybe I can help out. I won't argue against that. Those will remain silent from that point until you both finished eating and moved your trays from the table. While I was waiting for you, I gave Harvey a call to make sure he was okay. How'd that go? It was... Uh, okay. Press him to tell you more or accept his answer? I want to know more. He... he blatantly made it sound like there was something more going on. Uh, I am very curious. You don't seem so sure about that. Did something happen? Uh, well... It was a mess, and I shouldn't bother you with it. Dozer, you're my boyfriend. You have to talk to me. Then... Please don't tell him I told you this. What? He kinda got mad at me for not calling or texting him yesterday. He got mad at you? Yeah. For that? He said he was worried about me and it wasn't like me. He didn't just come out and say he was mad, but I could hear it in his voice and how he... Uh, how he what? Well, he felt it was necessary to remind me that it was one of the many reasons our relationship failed. Saying that our communication fell apart and that the same thing would happen with me and you if I slipped up like that too much. It was like he was attacking me for it. Harvey said that to you? He sighed, took a deep breath, and unclenched the fists he had balled up on the table. Yeah, I don't know why. It's not like Harvey at all. It was like he was intentionally trying to make me feel bad, and he's never really done that before. I mean, I just forgot to talk to him yesterday. I was with you most of the time, and I just talked and I, and I talked with you last night. It just slipped my mind. That's... That's really uncool. This isn't... That isn't okay at all, Dozer. I know. He made me snap at him, and I just hung up. He's texted me a few times, but I haven't even looked at him. I just gotta step away from him and reply later, otherwise I'm gonna talk out of anger. I'll talk out of anger with him <laughs> to him for you. You don't have to deal with them talking down to you like talking down like that to you. No, it's fine. Please don't get involved with this mess. I can handle it. I just need a vent about it. <clears throat> it makes me happy that you're willing to come to my defense. Of course I'll come to your defense. I don't want to hear that someone else is talking and trying to make you feel bad or anything like that. I... I care about you... I care about you, so... Thanks, Grant. It really makes me feel a lot better. I'll handle Harvey, so don't worry about it. Don't... Don't treat him any differently either, okay? I'm sure he knows I'm gonna tell you about the call anyway, but just... Don't mention it or anything, okay? Fine, I won't mention it. You promise? I promise. But if he does this again, he's gonna have to deal with me, got it? It shouldn't happen again. It better not. If it does, I'll just stop talking to him completely. Good. Dozer reached across the table and put his hand on top of yours. I'm glad I have you with me. I'm glad I can be here for you. How about we head over to my place until practice? We have about an hour and a half until then, and I can't think of anything else to do. Sure, sounds good to me. Come on, then. You want a snack or something? We just ate lunch, though. There wasn't anything good... F any. There wasn't any good dessert, though, so I was just gonna cut up some fruit to munch on. Oh, well, fruit does sound good, so whatever you cut up, I'll eat. Okay, I'll prepare some stuff then. You sat on the couch and stared at your phone. I want to text Harvey so badly and tell him to just leave Dozer alone. 
It's not my place, though, and I don't want to give... I don't want to give him... I don't want him giving Dozer a harder time for it. But man, if Dozer tells me again that Harvey has done something like this to him, I won't stay quiet. He seemed like such a nice guy, too. Dozer was in the kitchen for only a short bit, and when he returned, he had a large bowl with a variety of fruits chopped up and tossed into it. He sat down next to you and held the bowl out. Help yourself to it as much as you want. I have apple slices, grapes, banana halves, pineapple chunks, and orange slices. And this is just a snack? For me, it's barely a snack. <laughs> Dozer wrapped an arm around your shoulder and held the bowl in front of you, grabbing the remote from his other hand and get the TV started. We'll just eat some fruit, watch some TV, and relax until practice. Sound good? Mm-hmm, I'm down for that. He snuggled in closer to Dozer, and while watching TV, you would periodically pass a piece of fruit up into his open mouth. He tried to do the same for you, but it didn't seem to work as well. His fingers were so much larger than the grapes, and when he tried to put one in your mouth, the tip of his finger ended up in your mouth with it. Trap his finger! Do it! You grinned to yourself and used your lips to put a little pressure on his finger before he was able to withdraw it. You surprised he made no extra effort to pull his finger out, but then you felt his other fingers caress your chin. He pushed his finger a little further into your mouth and you opened up, letting his finger go free. <laughs> With a chuckle, he patted your cheek and continued eating the fruit without saying anything. It didn't take long before all the fruit was gone and the bowl was set aside. Dozer let out a cavernous yawn, scratching over his chest as he did. I'm feeling kind of sleepy. I might catch a quick nap before practice. Go for it. I don't feel like getting up to move to the bed, though. I just nap right here. I know you've napped on this couch before. This couch is huge and comfy, so just lay your head in my lap and you should be fine. You sure? Just lay down, Dozer. <laughs> Dozer scooted down the couch and then laid over his side with his feet hanging off the edge. He placed his head against your leg and wiggled around until he made himself comfortable. You alright? I'm fine. I'm just fine. You propped yourself against his hulking frame and began massaging your fingertips over his head. Mmm, this that feels good. Keep that up and I'll fall asleep in no time. Just don't forget about practice. I won't. Don't worry. You just rest. He continued to rub your fingers around his head, moving along his neck and shoulders too, making him sigh deeply. He did fall asleep quickly, all curled up against you with his arms crossed against his chest. Jeez, he's so huge, but he's just a giant softy. Harvey really gave up something good, it seems like. As he snoozed, you kept running your fingers over his head. You felt him twitch under your hand, so you stopped and just let your hand rest for the rest there. Again, you felt him jerk against you and he kicked his foot out. Those are you awake? There was no response from him, so he shrugged it off and turned your attention back to the TV. You jumped though when he groaned loudly and began to continue to fidget. Those are you okay? The moaning continued and he, and he still didn't respond to your voice. Those are wake up. Patted the side of his cheek and shook him, but nothing changed. Dozer! He gasped and his eyes shot open. <laughs> what? Dozer sat up and rubbed his eyes again, his hands against his eyes. You noticed his head was now glistening with sweat. Are you alright, Dozer? I, I guess. You woke me up from a pretty terrible dream just now, so thanks for that. What in the world were you dreaming about? I was just making the most terrible groans I've ever heard, and you kept jerking around. I was really concerned. Really? I, I had no idea. I've jolted out of dreams before and been covered in sweat, but I never knew I made noise. I guess I wouldn't know, though, since it's only ever happened when I'm alone. Put your hand on his leg and move closer to him. What was the dream about, though? Uh, it was like that dream I had the other night about you and my dad again. This time was a little worse, though, because my mom was there, too, and I couldn't do anything but watch. I had to watch as my dad beat the both of you. I was, like, paralyzed from fear or something. I couldn't move. No matter how hard I tried, I could only scream at them. Uh, that again? It's a terrible thing to have, a, have to dream about. He put his hand on top of yours and squeezed it tightly. All my bad dreams include him, and it makes me so mad. He's not been a part of my life for many years, so why does he haunt me still? You winced as he squeezed your hand tighter, and he relaxed his hand before you could say anything. 
I don't want to know what to do about it. Have you ever considered talking to him again? To my dad? No, of course not. Why would I ever want to talk to that bastard again? What if he's changed? <laughs> That's unlikely. Hell, I don't even know if he's still alive or not. For all I know, he's dead. He sunk back into the couch and sighed again. I don't know, Grant. I don't know what to do. I'll talk to my mom about it, see what she thinks. Maybe she's dealt with patients that have similar problems. I'll be here for you, Dozer. I'll do what I can to help you. Thanks, Grant. We should get ready for practice and head to the court soon. We have about 30 minutes and there's nothing wrong with getting there early. And considering how the weather looks, we can't afford to waste any time. Yep, let's cha uh, change and head off. Okay. By the time we finish stretching and start warming up, everyone else should be here. Yeah. The sound of thunder can be heard in the distance. And if that gets any closer, we're going to be calling practice early. We aren't going to risk raising our rackets up and getting struck by lightning. <laughs> yeah, I'd prefer not to be electrocuted. We don't have time to waste. Let's do this. You and Dozer made quick work of your stretching routine and began warming up immediately after. I wish someone else was here to rally with them first. Dozer did not hold anything back during the warm-up. Every time he hit the ball, he put power into it. Most of his shots landed outside the baseline, but he did what he could to send them back to him. He has a lot of pent-up frustration from the day. So I was expecting this. I'll do what I can with it, though, and he'll get it out of his system soon, I hope. To help with it, you would send lobs his way every other shot, allowing him to slam it back with as much strength as he could muster. While you rallied, you noticed the rest of the team had shown up, but Dozer seemed oblivious that anyone else was there as he continued smashing balls back to you. As time went on, his shots were becoming more accurate, but his strength wasn't letting up. God, I can really keep up with him right now. Did he forget we were just warming up? Ball after ball flew at you, and your racket slipped from your hand after a particularly hard shot hit it. The ball flew up in the air like a normal lob, and Dozer lined himself up ready to smash it like he'd been doing. You were defenseless against the ball is about to fly back at you. Dozer! Dozer stopped where he was and looked around, and he was snapped out of a trance. Like he was snapped out of a trance. The ball ended up bouncing on top of his head, leaving him looking bewildered. Phew, that could have been bad. That could have been bad. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you? I saw the ball hit you on the head. Well, barely felt it. I'm fine. Got a little carried away, didn't I? Maybe just a little bit. Are you feeling better? Mm, I feel fine. Why do you ask? When you're aggravated or frustrated, you take it out on the court or use the gym to relax. You've had a lot to deal with today, and you were way more intense than you normally were. Uh, yeah. That. It's the best way to channel any anger that's has built up. I still need to be careful, otherwise I could hurt someone. It's a good thing Coach yelled at me, otherwise I might have hurt you with the ball I was getting ready to slam. His voice is definitely commanding. <laughs> sure is. Snapped you out of whatever state of mind you were in. I'm sorry about that, I really did lose myself. Don't worry about it, Dozer, I was expecting it after the day you've had. I just hope you feel better after that. I do. I'm really sorry I to put you through that. It's okay, stop apologizing. Okay, okay. He waited for you to follow him over to where Coach Grifter and everyone else was waiting. Looks like you two are really into your rally. Dozer, you were a little too into it. You need to stay focused. Yeah, I got a little carried away. Channel whatever you were feeling there into focus on the match, and you will be a terror to play against on the courts. Your shots were surprisingly accurate considering how hard you were hitting it. I think even Spencer would have a hard time returning some of those. I actually have to agree with that. I'll try, coach. You'd have to rack it against Dozer's butt and grinned. You can definitely do that, Dozer. He can! As a matter of fact, we'll work on channeling that today! Well, for as long as we're able. I don't know how much time we have. We should just call practice now. There's no sense in being here if it's gonna stop raining. It might not even rain, and your matches are in a couple of days. This is the last chance you really get to practice. We'll be fine. I definitely want to get some extra practice in. <laughs> oh, shit. Same year. I want to crush these guys on Friday. 
Yeah, but I heard from Chester this entire time. <laughs> Darius, you need to practice as much as anyone else, so you can stick around until the rain starts. I'm out as soon as it starts, then. I wouldn't expect you to stay if it starts raining. So, Dozer, you're coming with me today. The rest of you set up a doubles match. Grant, you're with Spencer, and Darius, you'll play with Chester, since those two are playing together Friday. Got it. Come on, guys. Good luck, Dozer. <laughs> Same to you. Despite Chester and Darius's protesting, they were paired together against you and Spencer. It wasn't a fair pairing, but Spencer made sure to keep things balanced by not playing as aggressively as you know he could. Not even an hour went by before you started to feel rain. It wasn't enough to have any effect on the courts, but Darius stuck to what he said and left as soon as the first drops hit him. Everyone else kept playing, though, but the rain began to pick up, signaling time to retreat from the courts. Everyone took refuge under an awning outside the courts for a quick meeting. Well, that's it for practice for today. There's no telling how long it'll rain. By the time we clean off the courts, it'll be too late to really get much more done. So, Friday, we're playing here, weather permitting. Everyone needs to be here at 10 to start warming up, and our matches will start at 11. Get plenty of rest beforehand and eat a good breakfast. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and everyone be careful on your way home. You're all dismissed. As Coach turned to leave, Chester grabbed his attention, leaving you to talk with Spencer and Dozer. The rain is really coming down now. Yeah, it's pouring down. Should be a nice walk home. I can drive you home if you like. You live pretty close to me. Nah, it's cool. I really like the rain. We seriously talked about it yesterday. He loves being out in the rain. Alright then. What about you, Grant? I can give you a lift home. Oh, why, yearn? He doesn't know where I live yet. What should I do? I guess we'll decline. Can you really lie to that face? I'm gonna have to. I guess I'll have to decline too. I don't want to be a bother. It's no bother to me. It's pouring down rain and you don't have any many options here. Uh, well, I just... You'll be going with me. Oh? I told him the next time it rained I was going to make him go out and walk out in it with me. You have a spare you have spare clothes in your bag, don't you, Grant? Oh, I, I do. You're still going to do this with me, right? Oh, well, yes. Yeah, I am. I hate being wet in my clothes, but... Who knows, maybe it'll be fun. <laughs> you two are crazy. Well, try to be safe then. You don't need to hurt yourselves before Friday. We'll be careful you drive safely too. We'll do, later. Later, Spencer. See ya. You really want me to run through the rain with you? Yep, come on, it's gonna be great. Man. You ready to do this? No, but I don't have a choice anymore, do I? Nope, there's only one way you're getting anywhere now. I could still go catch the bus, it's not too far off. You'd have to stand in this rain and wait for the bus. And you'll have to run through the rain to get there anyway. <laughs> okay, fine. That's what I thought. Let's do this. Those who grabbed your hand and pulled you out into the rain, releasing you only after you were fully in it. You cringed as the cold water, water drizzled over you, soaking into your clothes quickly. See, it's not too bad. It isn't too bad. You hunched over, following behind Dozer, and he picked up the pace and he walked down the sidewalk. Let's take a different path. Really? Why? <laughs> Come on! Without much warning, he sprinted down the sidewalk, leaving you to try to catch up to him. How is he so fast? You ran along behind, behind Dozer, and the you know, rain only started to come down harder. Instead of turning towards his apartment, he led you towards the park, glancing over his shoulder periodically to make sure you were still behind him. Once in the park, he dotted off sideways into the grove of trees. Much to your relief, you were mostly shielded by the rain, with a thick canopy of leaves and branches created above you. Somehow, you managed to lose Dozer, though. You sighed and leaned against a tree, shivering as the water had completely soaked through your clothes now. Dozer, where'd you run off to? It's cold out here! He scanned around for him, and then you heard the sound from another tree. Dozer? You snuck towards a larger tree as the sound came from and peeked around it, but you didn't see him anywhere. Where'd he go? 
There's a loud thud behind you and you spun around to see Dozer lunge at you, pinning you against the tree with his chest. Jeez, give me a heart attack, why don't you? Were you up in the tree? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was breathing heavily, looking down at you with a broad grin on his face. His body was resting heavily against you and he ran his hands down up and down your arms. Does this help with the cold any? Y yeah, a bit. Maybe this will help too. Dozer moved his face in close to yours and kissed you, continuing to rub his, your arms and try to help keep you warm. It was definitely helping. Your face burned and you could feel more heat radiating from his body pressed against you. You welcomed the feeling though, and you let your hands move up to his chest squeezing and groping over his pecs. He pushed harder against you, keeping you deeper and with a lusty grunt, kissing you deeper with a lusty grunt. You were pressed into the tree, hardly able to move, but still, but still, you rubbed his chest. You gasped when you felt his hand cup your crotch, though, massaging his strong fingers into your groin. Didn't take long before you were rock hard in his hand. The sound of the rain drowned out your grunts and groans as he teased you, and he moved quickly, letting his hand venture a little further. Just in case. I mean, it's not like you're missing anything. <laughs> Wow, what timing! Literally something popped up right as I fucking did that. <laughs> nice. In one swift motion, he forced his hand down into your shorts and grabbed your cork. You jumped it, having startled you. <sighs> the dozer. Feeling warmer now. His hands ran up and down your shaft a few times before sliding down to massage your stick. Mm, feels like you're warming up a bit. What if someone sees us? Who's gonna see us here? Nobody was in the park, and we're surrounded by trees, and it's getting dark thanks to the clouds. Nobody'll know. Mm, okay. He kissed your neck, continuing to work his hand over your cork while you did nothing more than grope his chest. His lips found yours as he kissed you deeply once more, quickening his pace with his hand. It completely enveloped your cork so that there was constant stimulation all over your mimba. Uh, that, that feels so good, Dozer. Yeah, you really like it, huh? And there's a penis. You felt him tug your shorts down, letting the cool air swirl around your crotch as he leaned over to take a look. Uh, you're a pretty big guy, you know. His fingers ran up and down the underside of your shaft, and he resumed masturbating you while he keeping his body pressed into you. Y you're gonna make me go off if you keep this up. That's the point. He cupped your balls with his other hand, tugging and massaging them gently. While he did that, he put his forehead to yours, keeping his face as close to yours as he could. His breaths were hot and heavy, puffing against your face as you panted. You're squirming against the tree. You're really getting ready to burst. He kissed you again. Yeah. Don't fight it. Let it happen. Again, he kissed you, even letting his tongue lightly brush against yours. You inhale deeply through your nose from that sensation. What about you? Don't worry about me, I want you to come, then you can take care of me. The next time he kissed you, his tongue invaded your mouth, mixing your saliva together as his broad, soft flesh dragged over yours. You grabbed him by the, his shoulders, and your breathing became faster and louder. Mm, that's right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm already shoot the hot load for me, I'm not... Jesus. You are leaking so much you can't hold it much longer. Christ. He squeezed your walls a little tighter as his hand slid up and down your cork. You prick him, letting him work you over with no trouble. Yeah, I'm gonna come, those are I'm so close. Yeah, come then, show me what you got. His hand began to work even faster to help push you over the edge. And he locked lips with you, stifling the groan that came out as you climaxed. Mwah! He watched as you shot several ropes of Milky Kim into the air. It spotted on the ground around you and more to follow, and some of it even landed on his stomach. You writhed around a while as he kept stroking you, your cum just dribbling down over his hand now as he squeezed out as much of your spunk as he could. Mm, there you go. That was a pretty heavy load. You shouldn't let it build up like that. 
When your cork finally started to go limp, he tucked it back into your shorts and shook his hand off before kissing you with the same passion as last time. Ready to put your hands on a big dragon? Yeah. Dozer grinned and swapped places with you, so his back was now to the tree and you were in front of him. How does this look? So, so great. Well, what are you waiting for, then? Put those hands to work. Warning! The following scene does not work properly due to resizing of the game. You can opt to skip this if you've already seen it or don't want to click your way through. Unfortunately, as there's no reason for us to go through this scene, as you guys can't see it anyway, we're gonna go ahead and skip this scene. Sorry, guys. You can play it your damn self. It's a free motherfucking game. Wow, we're really drenched now. Yeah, we're both dripping wet. Get out of your wet clothes right here so we don't get water everywhere and I'll go grab a towel for you. Dozer tossed his clothes to the floor and stomped his feet around, making <clears throat> more of the water drip off his body. Okay, I'll be back in a second. Dozer ran off to grab you a towel as you stood there shivering and having shed most of your clothes. He was gone for a moment. He was only gone a moment before he returned with a large towel. Here, dry off and get into your dry clothes. I'll go toss all our wet clothes in the wash, and they'll be clean and washed and dried, too. Thanks. Huh, your teeth are chattering. Let me go get you a blanket, too. Before you could protest, he was already gone, and he returned quickly with a blanket. Once you're dry, you can curl up on the couch with this. He, he took your towel away from you and began to quickly and roughly dry you off. I'll help you dry off really, really quick, and I'll go get you a hot dinner. I kept you out of the rain way too long, and I hope it doesn't get you sick. I'll be okay. Are you sure? You can take a hot shower while I cook, too, if you'd like. And I might have some clothes that'll be warmer for you. I can even get you another blanket for you, if you'd like. I should probably make you some hot tea, also. That'd help. He rambled on as he continued to dry you, oblivious that you were already mostly dry at that point. <laughs> Dozer, I'll be okay. Are you sure? I'm going to cook dinner regardless, and I don't mind doing the other things for you if it'll make you more comfortable. With the towel in his hands, he held you by the cheeks and locked eyes with yours. You saw nothing but concern in those beautiful amber eyes of his. But it made you feel happy to know that he cared so much about your health. I'm sure. I really appreciate you looking out for me, though. Okay, if you need anything else from me, though, let me know, okay? I will. He left the towel draped over your shoulders and kissed you on the forehead. I'm going to take care of her clothes, wash off a little, and make dinner for now. So make yourself comfortable. Alrighty. Give you a kiss on the forehead again, gathered all the wet clothes, and left you at the door. Guess I'll get changed first and just relax until dinner. Once you were fully dried off and changed into your other clothes, you curled up on the couch with, with the blanket dozer had left for you. Mmm, so thick and warm. I could fall asleep if I wasn't waiting for him to make dinner. At the time, you didn't feel like watching TV, so you pulled out your phone and stared at the screen for a moment. I wonder if Dozer's checked in any Harvey's messages yet. I don't want them to be mad with each other, but Harvey has to realize Dozer has his own life. I can't help but feel somewhat guilty about it, though, so I wonder if there's anything I can do to ease the tension between them. No, oh, don't text Harvey. He explicitly asked you to stay out of it, so stay out of it. Might be the best to stay out of it, though. I could make things worse, and I don't want that to happen. Instead, I'll just talk, go talk to Dozer. Need to check, check with him to make sure he doesn't mind me staying the night here, too. Mmm, things look pretty great so far. Are you cooking the chicken any differently from last time? Dozer didn't look away from the counter as he replied to you. Mmm, I, I am, actually. I'm going to cook the chicken on a cast iron skillet this time, bake it a couple of minutes, and it'll taste a lot like it was cooked on a grill. Just chopping up some veggies right now to serve with it. Oh, that sounds great. Are you sure I can't help with anything? Yeah, it's all good. Okay, well, if you do need me, let me know. I will. And is it okay if I stay here tonight, Dozer? The weather looks pretty bad outside, and getting home might be a little difficult. Look, like I'd send my boyfriend out into a storm like this. I wouldn't let you leave even if you wanted to. It's too dangerous out there now. The wind has picked up, it's raining harder, and the lightning is crazy. There's no way you're leaving. <laughs> okay, thanks. Which means you need to call Maria, too, to let her know you're here. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll give her a call. I'll be back in a moment. 
You dialed Maria's number, but there was no answer. And she didn't pick up. I leave a voice message, I guess. Hey, Maria, since the weather's really bad right now, I'll be staying at Dozer's tonight. The rain started getting really bad while we were at practice, and since this place was closer, I ended up here. I'll see you sometime tomorrow. Bye. Click. I'll send her the same thing as a text, too, just in case she doesn't check her voicemail. Just sending a quick text, you went back to the kitchen. All done? She didn't answer, so I left her a voice message and sent her a text. Oh, uh, okay. I'm sure she'll reply to me whenever she notices. Mm -hmm, I'm sure she will. Uh-oh, that's no good. I hope the power doesn't go out. At least not until dinner is done. Hold on and let me cook. <laughs> it's been a while since it stormed enough to make the power go out. Yeah, I don't remember the last time that happened. Let's hope it stays on until I finish cooking. I'm going to start cooking the chicken now. All I need is 15 minutes. You can help me now since I'll, it could be short on time. Sure, what can I do? Just keep chopping up the vegetables like I was doing, then pull some plates and cups out for, out for the table. Alright, it can do. Careful with the knife, too. It's really sharp. Okay. You stepped over to the counter and took over what Dozer was doing. It was a slow process for you, but you got everything chopped up and Dozer was making the final touches on the chicken. You really like vegetables, huh? There's so much here. Mm-hmm, I do. They're delicious and good for you, so it's a win-win. What are you going to do with them? Saute them with some salt, pepper, and a little butter until they're tender. There's a small container of butter in the fridge, so if you'll drop about a tablespoon of it into the empty pan, I'll finish with the with those while the chicken finishes cooking. After doing what he asked, you set the table and prepared to eat. It wasn't much longer until Dozer was f dishing out f dishing food out between the plates and joining you at the table. Dig in. If you want more vegetables, I left some just in case. Thanks, Dozer. Everything looks fantastic as usual. You're welcome. Dinner was just as good as you expected it to be, and there was no way you were going to be able to eat more. He happily obliged and ate what was set aside. Once dinner was done, you kept up your side of the deal and began cleaning up the dishes. Dozer finished his food and, help, and, help, and helped out, making the task a breeze to complete. When the dishes were taken care of, you and Dozer retreated to the living room. If you don't mind, I'm going to take a shower. Considering what happened earlier, I really need one right now. <laughs> Go for it, I don't mind at all. Thanks, I'll try not to take too long. You can shower once I'm done, too. Alright, that sounds good to me. I can go for a shower myself. I should, ha I should have while you cooked, but I didn't for some reason. <laughs> That's alright. I'll be back soon, then. Found yourself relaxing in the couch once more, waiting for Dozer to return from his shower. I wonder if there'll be room for both of us in the shower. Or if he'd want me in there. <laughs> Maybe I should go ask. Ooh, <laughs> do we go or do we stay? Dun dun dun. You gotta fuck it go. All right, we'll go. I'm gonna ask. I just can't sit around and wait for these things. Just in case, since we're walking into a shower, you crept over to the bathroom door and took a deep breath before rapping loudly on the door. Hey, Dozer. What's up? Uh, do, do you need any help in there? Can't hear you. Do you need some help in there? After a moment of silence, the door creaked open. The door cracked opened, and Dozer poked his head out. What? I, uh, I was wondering if you needed some help in there. With, with all those muscles, it would speed up the process. Oh, uh, I think I need a little time alone. Shower time is thinking time, and I have a lot to think about. But maybe, maybe another time. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry to bother you, and make sure you get out of the, and make sure you get out of the shower. Before you walked away, he reached out and grabbed you by the shirt, pulling you into the door so he could kiss you. I appreciate the offer, though. Mm hmm. Any time. Okay, so everything was safe. Everything was safe. He disappeared back into the bathroom, and you returned to the couch to wait for him. Uh, it was worth a shot. Yeah, at least I got a nice kiss out of it. Oh, there goes the power again. It didn't come right back on, though. Hope those will be okay. Since you had your phone with you, you used it as a flashlight and went to the bathroom door. Those are need some light in there? Oh, uh, I might. Here. Just laid your phone under the bathroom door with the light still on. Oh, that'll work. Thanks. I'll be out in a sec so I can get some candles to light the place up a little. 
As carefully as you could, you made your way back to the couch and laid down on it. It wasn't long before Dozer joined you in the living room. Your eyes had adjusted to the darkness by then, and he turned your phone's light off. Well, this is great, huh? It's not too bad. Now I have some tea candles in the kitchen. I'll grab those, and we can still take a sh and so you can take a shower. The water is heated by gas, so you don't have to worry about it being cold. Oh, good. I was afraid I'd not get to take one now. You'll just have to be careful. I'll be back in a moment. He left once more and then passed back through the living room after a few minutes. Okay, there are a few candles in the bathroom, so you should be good to shower. I put a fresh towel on the sink for you. Great, thanks. I'll be in my room whenever you're done. I'm going to give Harvey a call. You got your thoughts sorted out then? Yeah, I think so. I should be done by the time you're out of the shower. You can just come in into the room when you're done. Alrighty. Hmm. It's kind of relaxing to just only have candles in here with the rain outside. It'll be a good chance for me to relax, so I'll give Dozer some time to talk with Harvey. There was a single candle on Dozer's desk, just barely illuminating the room when he was standing on his sitting on his bed in the corner of the walls with his arms crossed and his eyes closed. All clean. Down on the phone, it seems. Yeah. I guess things are okay. He stretched his arms and legs out, sighing heavily. You took advantage of his stretching and hopped under the bed, pushing yourself back into his lap. He chuckled and wrapped his arms around you, pulling you back against his chest and stomach. Comfortable? Yep. He snuggled you tight and rested his chin against your head. How was the call with Harvey? He sounded pretty depressed about the whole thing, but he did apologize to me. That's good. I'm glad he apologized to you. I told him that he was still important to me, though he has to understand that you're my boyfriend. You're my priority. He's still my friend, and I care about him, but he can't expect me to talk to him every day. Things just aren't like that anymore. And he accepted that? Not before he smarted off to me again. Oh. He said he regretted encouraging me to pursue you because he didn't think it would mean I'd forget about him. He was trying to guilt me, but I put my foot down and stopped him before he got too far with it. You just want me to be alone all the time, I asked him. Turned that conversation around real quick and he apologized again. Man, Harvey has changed so much since we first got together. He was so shy and caring. It's really disappointing that he's become this controlling. He squeezed you tighter and he put his forehead against the back of your head. Please don't change like that. I won't, don't worry. I, st I don't think I could change like that. He sighed and hugged you close. Thanks. Nothing else was said and he just leaned back against the wall, keeping you held there in his lap. His hands moved mindlessly up and down your stomach, even slipping up and under your shirt while he touched you. It felt nice, so you just relaxed against him. You want me to rub you again? I don't know if the power is going to actually come back on, so there isn't much to do. I could at least make you feel good and we could talk some more. Or I could rub you instead. <laughs> I appreciate the thought, but it's relaxing for me to do the rubbing. Okay, I'll let you this time. Next time, though, you're mine. Sure, I'll let you. Abruptly, he pushed you forward and sat with his knees straddling your legs. Oof, he could have just asked me. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, if I hurt you, I guess I'll just rub that out too. Rub it out, huh? Those are pressed his hands into your lower back and snickered. Poor choice of words, I suppose. Only, uh, <laughs> oh, that feels really great. You really pushed down against, he really pushed down against your back, working his fingers into your body. Delphia, tell me if I get too rough, okay? I'm putting more weight into it this time. Okay. His hands move from your lower back up to your neck and shoulders before moving back down slowly. All the while, his fingers massaged in circles, really working deep into your muscles. I'm glad you're here tonight. It would really suck to have been here alone with no power or anything. I'd like to conserve my phone battery just in case I need it, so I'd just be bored and alone. I can't say the same. At least I'd at least have Maria with me. I would spend way too much time alone here, and it really sucks, you know? His hand slipped up under your shirt while he continued to rub over you. 
I've been here for a couple of years, and I've only been home a couple of times, and Harvey has only been out once to see me. It's been really lonely, but since I have you now, things have been a lot, really been a lot brighter. As his hands moved over your body, you couldn't help but notice that, with how he was sitting, he was almost constantly pushing his bulge against your butt. After you, er, your earlier exploits, though, you didn't think it was something that he would do intentionally, but it was definitely having an effect on you. I'm really happy to have you in my life, Grant. I just want you to know that. I... I'm glad that you feel that way. I'm glad to have you in mine. I'll do whatever I can to make you happy. If I ever screw up, please tell me. Always be honest with me about stuff. I don't want you to ever be mad with me. I'll never lie to you, and I'll... I'll always be faithful, I can promise you that. Just please, please don't leave me. I, I'll really do anything I can for you, just so you're happy. I just don't want to be alone anymore. Don't, sir. At that point, he laid beside you on his side, keeping one hand against your back. He rolled over to face him, though. Are you alright? Where is this all coming from? I had time to think while you were in the shower after I spoke with Harvey. Rubbing you down was enough to was to help put myself in my mindset to talk to you more about these things. The way my dad was and what Harvey has become kind of screwed with my head a bit. It's funny. I told you Harvey was insecure and now here I am feeling like the smallest slip will make you despise me. That's not going to happen, Dozer. There's nothing I can think of that we couldn't work through. Unless you murdered someone, I don't know if I could overlook that. He chuckled and moved his hand to your cheek. I'm trying to keep the, keep those feelings away, but it's hard. Well, I'm here for you. We can talk about it any time you might be feeling that way. You're a sweet and wonderful guy, and I don't want you feeling like you're not good enough. I'm the one that's supposed to feel that way. <laughs> no way. You have big goals, and you really care about other people. You have some really interesting hobbies, and you're a great cook. Not to mention, you put your hand against his chest and squeezed it. Your muscles are so impressive. I'm sure there are plenty of people that would do anything to get their hands on them. <laughs> you're pretty sexy, you know it. You're the total package. You really think so? I do. And... You're a thick guy in other aspects, too. Other aspects? You know, you're mm, well endowed. You got a thick boy down there. Oh, you... You like that? I gotta feel small sometimes, considering how big the rest of my body is. That small? No, not at all. You're longer than I am, though. And you have a lot more girth than I do. It's so impressive. It suits your body perfectly. Everything about you is big, and, and I love it. <laughs> you know, that makes me feel really good to hear you say that. The rest of my body keeps getting bigger, but the one thing... But that one thing, I can't do much about. I mean, I guess I could pump it, but I can have some pretty undesirable results if I'm not careful. Don't even, it's just perfect how it is. <laughs> Don't worry, hearing you say it, you like how it looks really has a huge impact on how I view myself. Good. Man, I'm really lucky to have you as my boyfriend. You're really something else. Those are pulled you toward him and hugged your head to his chest, resting his chin on you. And, uh, we... We really haven't talked to any about, uh, what we did. How do you feel? I had fun. It was... Definitely something for my first time fooling around with another guy. Your first time? And I dragged you into the rain of the park for it. Some boyfriend I am, huh? I really had fun, though, Dozer. Wasn't expecting anything like that, and for my first time, I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, despite my lack of experience. No, no, you did great! I haven't came like that in a while, and you really helped make that one of the most intense orgasms I've ever had. You really made me feel great. I felt slightly ashamed at what I had just done. That's kind of why I just ran off without saying much more after we were done. 
I didn't know what else to do. I did wonder about that. I'm sorry. Next time I'll make sure that we're somewhat re somewhere really comfortable and I'll be sure that you get the love and affection you deserve. Sounds good to me, Dozer. <laughs> I think I'm the lucky one to have someone so caring and understanding. Thank you for giving me a chance, Grant. You don't have to thank me. Just keep being you. Mm -hmm, will do. Even if it's crazy impulsive. Even if it's crazy impulsive. You'll stop me if I go too far, right? You know I will. Does that mean I really didn't go too far today? I didn't stop you, did I? No, but I kind of feel like I forced it on you. I trust you, Dozer. If I tell you to stop, I I know you'll stop. I was pretty nervous about the whole situation, but I really enjoyed it, too. You're not the only one that has a huge got a huge rush out of it, so don't overthink it, okay? You enjoyed yourself, then? Quite a bit. Next time, though, like you said, a place like right here would be a lot nicer. And sorry if I keep rambling, I didn't think some of the stuff I didn't think some of the stuff through and it just kind of jumbled. It's okay, dude. I'm just happy you're talking to me. <laughs> okay. He squeezed you tightly, rubbing his hands over your back. He didn't know how long he held you that way, and you were able to hear his heart beating, despite the signs of the rain and the thunder bearing down from outside. It started quick, but soon became slow and steady, and it was so very relaxing to listen to. You weren't tired, but as he held you for so long without talking, you ended up falling asleep in his arms.